The first question I had, I, it's about dream. It's not like I don't feel like this particular aspect of the question is really that important, but it was sitting on my mind for uh, for quite a while. Yeah. So I, I heard I heard you say like in multiple videos that the relationship between this dream, this waking state, and the dreams that we experience, the other dreams we experience, yes, uh, is like that. There are dreams within a dream. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. But, that is the whole of our present life is one dream. Yeah. We, within this dream, we have multiple periods of what we take to be waking, which is interrupted by uh, sleep, which is interrupted by uh, other dreams. But yeah. it's all part of the same dream because our identity, when you're dreaming, you always dream that you're Mate. You don't dream that you're someone else. So you, you retain the same identity. Well, yeah, this is where I, I don't really, I can't really grasp it because in my understanding before it was always just separate dreams, like there, there nothing yes, no, but, no connected but, at all. Because if you, I, I was thinking, because if you say that if there are dreams within a dream, then you're somehow giving a greater ontological status to this dream. This, um, in a way, I mean. Yeah. It, it, it could be interpreted in that way. But yeah. we need to understand that this dream is as unreal as those dreams. Yeah, yeah, correct. yeah. but yeah, I mean, it's a bit, if it, it's a bit difficult to really see if I'm Matei in all those dreams. It's, it's true that I'm dreaming of maybe some persons that I experience in this state or yes, something yes. like that. But I can't really remember if I experienced myself actually as having this name and having this identity and all yeah, that. I think yeah. more or less we do because, for, for, for example, in dream, we have memories. We, we, we yeah. see places we're familiar with. We see people we're familiar with. So we, we are basically, though the dream body is obviously different to this body, the yeah. identity, the, 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 the person we take ourselves to be is still the same person with the same... Um, we will have memories of our childhood. And that, that's why when, we, when we're dreaming, it just seems to be, but we, are, we seem to be awake. And people say, no, but dream is so short. But this, is, yeah, this waking state is long. But what makes this waking state seem long is because we've got memories going back 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, back to our childhood. But those same memories are, are there in dream. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, this is, this is clear to me that we cannot really say that there is any substantial difference. That is clear, yes, I yes, mean. Yes. But, yeah, I was just not very clear on this point. Yes. Exactly. Because in my understanding, yeah, because in my understanding, they're all just separate dreams, like nothing, yes, yes. anything to do with each other. But, again, I don't think this is extremely important like yes, this yes. particular point and just moving on from this to like more general questions about dream um how does the teaching that the world is a dream actually help us in our practice of self-inquiry and our uh of self-investigation and our constant fight with this share of us because sometimes uh when i feel overwhelmed about the situation or something Remembering that this is just a dream is comforting, is, is helpful to detach yes. myself. But sometimes it isn't. Like when, when the situation is is much more stressful, I can remember, but it doesn't really make that much of a difference because yes, I'm so yes, yes. yeah. Well, that, well, yeah, that is that, that is true. But as a general rule, if we recognize, if we are willing to accept that this is just a dream that will help us to detach our mind from this world. If we take this to be real, it, it, it's far more difficult to give up our attachment to it. Because if this world is real, then this person, Michael, is also real. Because this Mike, person, Michael, is also part of this world, or this person, Matei. So the person, if the world is real, then the person we take ourselves to be also becomes real. 
And then it's far more difficult to separate ourselves from this person. If we recognize all this is just a mental fabrication, we begin to set a, put a distance between ourselves and the person we take ourselves to be. So it's actually, it's, it's, a very, it's a very deep and fundamental help if we are willing to accept this. But accepting on the conceptual level is one thing. All these things become clearer and clearer the deeper we go in the practice. That is, the deeper we go in the practice, the more we are separating ourselves from the person we seem to be. And the easier it is to recognize then that this world is just a, a series of perceptions, nothing more than that. As Bhagavan says in verse 6 of Uludu Nabudu, the world is, is, is five kinds of sense uh, impressions. There, Andrew, but nothing else. That if you remove the five kinds of, of, of sense impression, there's no such thing as a world. The world is nothing but uh, those sense impressions. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's correct. And uh, again, as you said, it's it's one thing on the conceptual level because okay, yeah. I can I can recognize. Yeah. yeah, we can't. I mean, there's no reason to suppose it's anything yeah. else. But it's not really that we can prove it's a dream. It's it's a dream. We can't it's, prove it. No, no. But yeah, but it's just, we, it's just we we also that that is we we have to question. Yeah, yeah. that that is gen as a general rule we take. We take it for granted this world is real, this world exists independent of ourselves. That is the, the, the common sense view, as it's called. But we, in philosophy or in spirituality, we have to question appearances. Yes, it seems to be real, but is it actually real? Does it actually exist independent of my perception of it? There's no evidence whatsoever but it does exist independent of our perception of it. And that way we can, we, that's a far more parsimonious view. Yeah. Are, you, are, you a, are you familiar with the term Occam's razor? <laughs> yeah. oh, Occam's razor, it's a principle in philosophy. It's yeah. called the, prin the principle of parsimony. You yeah. shouldn't, if you can explain something in a very simple way, we, it, with very few assumptions, that explanation is much more likely to be true than an explanation that it, it entails so many assumptions. So it, it's also a, it's a principle followed in science. In science, they try to look for the, for the simplest explanation. That is, any science is a matter of observing phenomena and then... Um, uh, coming up with the hypotheses and theories to explain those phenomena and then testing those theories, making predictions and, and seeing whether, uh, 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 trying to falsify the theory. If they can falsify it, then you have to come up with a better theory. So science consists of observations and theories and the process of testing those theories. The, always the simpler theory is more likely to be true than a complex theory. If you have to assume so many things, uh, that, that if you have to assume, say, a hundred things, if, if you give an explanation but assumes a hundred things that are not known for certain, that explanation is less likely to be true than a, an explanation that, in, that entails only five assumptions, let's say. It's that more solid ground because uh, the theory that has more assumptions has more weaknesses because it's, it's got more weaknesses. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, a, yeah I would... a, a chain, a chain with five weak links is stronger than a chain with a hundred weak links. Yeah, correct, correct, correct. Yeah. Um, but so when we apply this to this, if we say, if we, if we say this world exists independent of our perception of it. We are assuming so many things. We're assuming there's a physical world out there and then all these laws of physics, everything. So many things have to be assumed to say that this exists independent of our perception of it. So but, but your, your ontological landscape, as they would say in philosophy, becomes far more complex. 
so many more things exist. But actually, when we, when we consider it, do we have any evidence that this is anything but a dream? No, we don't. So if this is just a dream, a dream is a far simpler explanation. It's not assuming that there's a world out there. It's just saying the world is nothing but a mental fabrication. Even if, supposing, supposing you, someone argues with you, no, no, the world exists out there. Even if the world does exist out there, our perception of the world entails a mental fabrication. Because yeah. all that's coming into the, the, the light is coming into the eyes. For example, just take one of the five senses. Light is coming into the eyes. That stimulates some, uh, some photosensitive cells in the retina. Those stimulated cells send some, uh, some signals to the brain. Those signals are in the form of electrochemical um, impulses or whatever. I, I don't know the, the precise science about it. So what if the brain is receiving is just some impulses. It then has to interpret those and form this world picture. So what, what we are seeing of the world is, our, is, is e even, if, even from the, um, from the, even if you accept that the world exists out there, what you're seeing is not the world out there. You're just seeing your mental impression of it. So <laughs> it's, it's the mind that builds the picture of the world. So, so why what, we know from dream, the mind can build a picture of a world without any external stimulus. So why should we assume there's an external, it's something external that has to cause this? So it's a far, far simpler um, view of the world. So philosophically, it's a much more sound view. Although the majority of philosophers will disagree because they're very uncomfortable with the idea that this world is nothing but a, a fabrication of their own mind. Because then you run into problems like, they say, oh, but then if that is so, whose mind? You have to say, well, the person who is seeing the world. But so many people are seeing the world. In whose view are so many people seeing the world? And then they, they come across what the, the big, um, the big um, demon that they all try to avoid is solipsism. If this is all a dream, then you come back to just to one. In a dream, there's only there's only one dreamer, and that they don't they, they, because but ultimately we all believe what we want to believe. If you don't want to believe, if you feel threatened by the idea that this world is just a dream, you will find any excuse you can to justify belief in something else. But actually, if, if we're on the spiritual path, we, our aim is to give up our attachment to the world. So what does it matter? Let it be real or unreal. What is it to us? We, we are indifferent to it. So uh, for, for the worldly philosophers, they're not able to give up their, they're unwilling to give up their attachment to the world. So they're not willing to accept this. But, but logically, this is a far more, a far more, um, a view that is far more likely to be true than the opposite view that the world exists out there. But, but, but your question is, how is this beneficial from a spiritual point of view? One reason is it helps us to detach our mind from the world. Another reason is, if you see Bhagavan's works, if you see, for example, Nana, if you, the first paragraph is introductory. Uh, that, that is about happiness. But when that um, actually wasn't part of the uh, questions and answers, uh, uh, the questions that she play asked and the answers Bhagavan gave. When Bhagavan wrote it as an essay, he wrote that first paragraph afresh as an introduction to the whole, to the theme. The second paragraph, most of it is not what Bhagavan said, but what Shiva Prakash and Palai added for his own clarification. Actually, in that second paragraph, the, the question that Bhagavan was asked, first question Shiva Prakash and Palai asked was, Swami, who am I? To which Bhagavan replied, Arivainan, awareness alone is I. 
Then Shiv Kashmpale asked, uh, what is the nature of that awareness? And Bhagavan replied, Satchidananda. So the only words of Bhagavan in that first paragraph, but the only words in the first par- in the second paragraph of the Bhagavan are awareness alone is I and Satchidananda. So the real, the real, the main part of the text begins from third paragraph. Third, fourth, and fifth paragraph, Bhagavan is talking more or less uh, 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 directly about the world. He's talking about the mind and the world. They, um, if you take Guru Vachika Kavai, the first hundred verses or so are about the world. If you take Uludu Napadu, Bhagavan first starts talking about the world. In fact, he begins the first world, the first verse of the main text, because we see the world. And then he goes on talking about there's a reason for this. That reason is made clear in Uludu Napadu. Because as Bhagavan says in the fourth verse of Uludu Napadu, if oneself is a form, the world and God will be likewise. If oneself is not a form, who can see their forms and how? Can the what is seen be of a different nature, but otherwise than what sees it? So the world we see is is a it is the nature of ego to always to see itself as a body and consequently to see a world. So the world and the body are ultimately nothing but ego. That's why he says in verse 26 of Uludhanaptu, if ego comes into existence, everything comes into existence. If ego doesn't exist, everything doesn't exist. Everything here means all phenomena, all objects. Why? Because all objects, all phenomena, exist only in the view of ego. In the absence of ego, there, there are no such things. And then he says, Handeya yabamam, ego itself is everything. So, ego is the seed. It is in the in a dream. The dreamer is seeing itself as the dream world, and it is seeing itself as a person in that dream world. But that dream world is nothing but the dreamer itself. So this all that we are seeing is nothing but ego. And it is the very nature of ego always to see things other than itself. So actually, when Bhagavan is talking about the world, he's not talking about something other than ourselves. He's, he's talking about the world to point out what seems to be something other than ourselves is intimately connected with our awareness of ourselves. If we were aware of ourselves as we actually are, which is that pure awareness, Pure awareness is not limited in any way. It's infinite. So we would, it, it, and pure awareness is not a form. So we would not be aware of any forms. We would not be aware of any finitude, anything finite, anything limited. It's because we've limited ourselves as this form, but we are consequently aware of all these other forms. So this, what he, Bhagavan teaches us about the nature of the world is intimately connected with this investigation of who am I? Because the I that is aware of the world is the same I that is aware of itself as I am this body. That is ego. When you remove that ego, the body and world are removed along with it because they have no independent existence. So it's all actually very intimately connected. And ultimately, when... As far as the practice of this path is concerned, as Bhagavan said, this is the easiest of all paths, the easiest means. What can be easier than attending to ourself? Attending to anything other than ourself entails a movement of our mind, our attention, away from ourself towards something else. Whereas attending to ourself is just allowing our awareness to rest in itself. There's no movement there. There's no action there. So this is the easiest of all paths. But it seems to us to be difficult. Why does it seem difficult? Because of our vishaya vasanas. Vishaya vasanas. Vishayas means all objects or phenomena. Everything other than ourselves is a vishaya. Vasana means inclination. 
because we we have a deeply ingrained belief that our happiness or misery depends on things other than ourselves. We are constantly attending to phenomena in order to try and maximize our happiness and minimize our unhappiness. We think if we get the things we want, we'll be happy. If we avoid the things we don't want, we'll be happy. But if we, the things we don't want are forced upon us, or if we lose the things we want, then we're unhappy. So our mind, our mind is in this delusion that happiness, our happiness is connected with things outside. We are constantly going outward, seeking happiness and trying to avoid misery. So all these things, they're all intimately related. In, true happiness is our real nature. There's not an iota of happiness in any of the things of the world. So we will be willing to turn within only when we are truly convinced that happiness doesn't lie outside, it lies only within. Because the mind naturally goes wherever there, it believes happiness lies. So this is why this path seems difficult, because of our deeply rooted belief that happiness, uh, happiness depends on things outside. But if those things outside are just our own mental fabrication, how can they be a source of happiness? In, in, in um, a dream, if we're hungry, the dream food will seem to satisfy our hunger. But when we wake up, we'll know that dream food wasn't a, a real food at all. If we're hungry, we'll still be feeling hungry when we wake up because the dream food cannot satisfy the, the hunger in this state. So the more we are able to recognize the unreality of all these things, the less our mind will depend on things other than itself for its happiness. So the mind will come closer and closer to a state of surrender. The, the opposite of surrender is depending on things other than ourselves for happiness. Surrender is depending on our real nature for happiness. In other words, letting go of everything outside and being willing to subside within, that is surrender. When I first started on this path, it, it, it didn't really seem clear that the difficulty lies in our unwillingness. But I think the more we practice, the more it becomes like painfully obvious that it's yes. just because we do really do not want to turn within. Because right yes. now, I mean, with, with this with this departure, like it really shocked me. So like my mind this past week has really been outward, outward going because I thought, oh, this, this is so bad. I really didn't want this to happen and all that. Yes. And then my mind just began jumping from one thing to another to all that. Uh, and it became really hard. I mean, hard. I mean, I was just unwilling to turn within. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. E even though I, I knew, like, and experientially, like, I know if I turn within, it'll, I'll just, uh, I'll just, it'll just be much better. So, yes. yeah, th this is really hard to deal with. Like, when you understand it's all about your own willingness. Yes, yes. Yeah. And that is... In, in Bhagavan's path, what is the problem? We ourselves have a problem. Yeah. And what is the solution? We ourselves have a solution. We, we, the natural uh, inclination of the mind is always to blame things other than ourselves. But actually, Bhagavan points out, we ourselves have a problem. By rising as ego, we've created all this. And the yeah. only solution cannot lie in any of these things outside because these things outside are all created by ego. It's all just a dream. So the solution can lie only within us. So we ourselves have a problem. We ourselves have a solution. Taking our rising as ego, as I am Matei or I am Michael, that is the problem. That all the, all the problems come down to that root, namely ego, the false awareness. I am such and such a person. I am this body. The solution lies within that. Within the problem, the solution is there. Because the, the problem is the adjunct mixed awareness. I am this body. The solution is the essential, 
the, is the reality of that, namely I am. If we hold on to I am, the adjuncts will drop off and I am alone will remain. So, yeah, so we are not to look, we, there's no problem. The, the external world is perfect. Sometimes it is said, the, the, the problem with the world, it is not a drishti dosha. So, sorry, it's not a shrishti dosha. It's, it's not a defect dosha, yeah. in creation. It is shrishti dosha, the defect in our outlook. It's Why is there dosha. a defect in our outlook? Because we're seeing from the perspective of ego. So ultimately, it all comes, whatever way we think of it, the problem comes back to ego. And ego is what? It's nothing but a false awareness of ourself. How to remove false awareness of ourself? Only by correct awareness of ourself. So only by knowing ourselves as we actually are can we solve all these problems. Yeah, and uh, when I when I first started on the past, like not only now I realize I was so foolish because I, I thought at the beginning like if I if I just practice really 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 hard and just try to practice all day, just really going like really forcefully going at it like with yes. that doing attitude. Yes, I, I'm gonna. Fine, two weeks. This is all be over. I, I'm yes, gonna, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get it. So, but the more if I just you realize, oh, it's that it's not at all like that. So it, it's not at all like that. No. Yeah, yeah. It, it's weird, you know. I, I yeah. don't know. I mean, it's just so foolish. That is. But, yeah. That is. We can know and be what we actually are here and now, if we want to. The whole problem is we don't want to. So how to rectify, the, so the problem lies in our desires. We have so much liking for this world, we are not willing to let go of it. So how do we rectify that? Their practice is necessary, because it's only by the practice of turning our attention within, but we weaken the inclination to go outside. The, the inclinations to go outside are the Shea They are the seeds that give rise to likes, dislikes, desires, attachments, hopes, fears, and so on. So Bhagavan is going right back to the root and dealing with the seeds of the problem, the seeds of the vasanas. The root of those that gives rise to those seeds is ego. Because whose vasanas are they? They're only ego's vasanas. Yeah. So, and this is, this is just moving on to my next question because I think it ties in. And uh, like being used to go about it forcefully for such a, a long time, uh, yeah. I was struggling with hearing, I, I mean, not struggling, but I was just not, I couldn't really get, what does it really mean to, when you say that Bhagavan's path is a gentle path? Like, what, what should we get from that? Bhagavan's path is is, is what? Uh, sorry, uh, a gentle path. A gentle, gentle one. path. Yeah. We love, what is gentler than love? This is the path of love. Nobody can succeed in this path without love. That's why Bhagavan used to say, bhakti is the mother of jnana. That means love is, it, it's only by love that we can succeed in this path because this is the path not only of self-investigation, it's the path of self-surrender. That is, we can investigate ourselves only to the extent to which we're willing to surrender ourselves. Because investigating ourselves is killing ego. So unless we're willing to, to give up this ego entirely, surrender it entirely, we will, not, we, we will not succeed in this path. And to be willing to sacrifice ourselves, that requires the greatest love. So there is no substitute for love. And that love will grow to the extent to which we put this into practice. So, yeah. since we can succeed only by love, and since love is, love is always gentle, love can be firm. Sometimes those who love us have to be firm with us. We have to be firm with ourselves. We, we have to check the natural inclination of the mind to go outwards. So we have to be firm, but we have to be gentle also. It's a firm, gentle hand is what is required. Yeah, I'm, I'm just struggling. I'm just struggling to understand what, what is the middle ground between like being forceful and 
Bang, on the one Bang, hand, Bang, I'm being dragged Bang, out on this Michelle. with an analogy. Okay. If you have a cow but has run away from its shed and is grazing, uh, grazing on neighbor's field, how are you to get the cow to come back? If you take a stick and start running after the cow, hoping to chase it back into the shed, wherever you run, the cow is going to run away with you from you. So you're going to have a very difficult task trying to chase it back into its shed because it will, once you start chasing it, the cow is then setting the direction. You're not setting the direction. You want the cow to go to the shed. The cow wants to go anywhere except the shed. He just wants to find nice. So the only uh, effective way to bring the cow back to his shed is to show some nice green grass. Greener than the grass it can, the cow can find anywhere else. Then it will follow you. And slowly it will come back to its shed. And once you, you show the grass in the shed, it will enter the shed. That's the end of the story. You close the shed and uh, no, no more problem. Bhagavan said all other paths, especially the path of yoga, are like running after the cow with a stick. Wherever you chase it, it's going to run somewhere other than the shed. So the only effective way is to draw it back into the shed. So how do we draw it back into the shed? The shed here means our own heart. So we need to slowly, slowly um, uh, um, entice the mind back into the heart. We can do this only by slowly, slowly practicing this, trying to turn our attention to ourselves. The more we turn our attention to ourselves, the more we taste how pleasant it is just to be self-attentive. Because when we're self-attentive, we're free of other thoughts. How pleasant that is. Until we allow ourselves to be swayed by our bhasanas and to go outward. So slowly, slowly, we, we, are, we are cultivating the taste for just being as we actually are. Yeah, I mean... So this can be done only... It, it cannot be done by force. It can be done only by grace. By grace means yeah. that whatever love we have is, is a reflection of the infinite love that Bhagavan has for us as himself. Because Bhagavan is our own real nature. Our own real nature is infinite love. So Bhagavan doesn't see us as other than himself. So he loves us as himself. That love that he has for us is what has has kindled in our heart or given rise in our heart to, to the little love that we have to follow this path. This love, it's only, this, this love is the, is the driving force because the nature of ego is always to be going outwards. So ego by its own willpower, or, and that, well, I'm, I, it's difficult to put it in words, but, yeah. but by its own desire, it cannot get it. It's only by love, by melting with love, yeah. by willing to be willing, because what's the difference between desire and love? Desire is always trying to acquire. I want this. I want that. We're trying to get things for ourselves, whereas love is not about what we can get, but what we can give. If you truly love someone, you're not thinking about what you can get from that person, what you can do for that person, what you can give to that person, yeah. how you can make that person happy. So love is about giving. Desire is about um, taking or acquiring. So in this path, we are not to gain anything. We are to lose everything. We are, must be willing to give up everything. And we'll be willing to give up only by the power of love. Yeah, I mean that, that's the thing because I mean I when I when I practice I, I'm turning my mind within. Yes, it is very pleasant. Yes, it is extremely peaceful. It, it, yes. It, but it's how quickly the mind? Though we exactly, know that, yeah, this, this how is what quickly I want the to mind say, yeah. jumps out? Exactly. <laughs> and then and then such as oh, but no, I, I'm gonna get more happiness from like watching this video or something. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's absurd because <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, that I that's the struggle, but. When you see it, it's just like, wow. <laughs> it's, so it's, so th that is because it is the nature of the mind to be constantly going outwards. We can't force it. 
back within. We can only yeah. gently, gently cajole it back within. So that story Bhagavan told about the runaway cow, if we think about it deeply, that's an extremely significant story because it shows the attitude with which we should approach this path. We're not trying to chase the mind back into the heart. We're slowly, slowly trying to cajole it, tempt it back into the heart. So it can be done only gently. Yeah, I think I only now I'm beginning to but understand this. Being it's, gentle yeah. doesn't mean being soft. We need to be gentle but firm. We need to be, that, that is, perseverance is the key. We need to be, be gentle but persistent but firm. Yeah, only now I'm beginning to understand this because I've been like, in the beginning I was so, just got to do it. I, yeah, I have yeah, to. Yes. I ha in, in that Iba wants to do it, yeah, yeah, that is yeah. the Katruk for Buddhi. That is the, yeah. the strong sense of doership. I can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I cannot do it. Only when that I goes, then it is done automatically by grace. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So ultimately, the, the, the great sages, the great saints who have attained, they said, I, they will all say, I did nothing. Grace came and yeah. swallowed me. Because yeah. ultimately, it is not we who are doing this. It is grace. But grace isn't something coming from outside, falling from heaven or something. Grace works from within. So whatever effort we make to turn within, that is the working of grace in our heart that is turning us within. So, yeah, and... Now I have like not really struggling, but another thing has come up. Uh, it's this fear that I'm going to fall off this path somehow, like that my mind will be dragged so much by external things. I totally forget about this, about yes. Bhagavan. Yes. Like it's just been like a dream, and yeah, it's just gonna end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I'm just with this departure again, because I have so many things on my mind, because I, my mind started to just be so, so much out of it going. And like, I don't know if, if it really is so, but I feel like I'm spending less time being self-attentive. Uh, it just disappears yeah. how much like, that I, you know. Yes, uh, well, the, the seeming, our, our seeming life in this world, this external life we have, seems to be making so much demands on us. So, yes, our mind is constantly getting distracted by other things and the mind is going outwards. But once we have got a taste for this path, we cannot really leave. Even if we seem to leave for, for a while, we will keep on coming back to this because there's nothing in this world that will satisfy us. Yeah, I'm counting on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, inevitably, we we cannot, we really cannot leave this path. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, but we can like uh, struggle a bit more than we should. Yes, so, yes. I, well, yeah. it, it's a struggle. This path is a struggle because we are. This is, a, as Bhagavan said, the spiritual path is a battle going on in our own heart, in our own will between our outward going vasanas, the Vishaya vasanas, and the, the Sat vasana, the liking to go within and just be as we actually are. So this is the battle that's going on in the heart of every true spiritual aspirant. This is, yeah. the, this is the battle that is expressed in songs like Arunachakshram, like in so many of the verses, you can see Bhagavan is what Bhagavan is writing about is this is this battle between the, the outward going inclinations of the mind and the love to turn within and surrender ourselves completely. Yeah, and about action, it's such such a poem. I mean, it, it's got it's got a verse for every for every state of uh, for every state of life. <laughs> I mean, it's got everything. Like yes, if I'm feeling this, oh, this this verse yeah, is here. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. About that, yeah, because I I'm like right now I'm more focusing on that verse that says like uh, I know be like a like a helms like a helmsman. So I'm not yeah, like yes, 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 yeah, yeah. Or like be like a support because I'm yeah. tender. Yeah. 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 yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, just in every every state of mind. Yes, yes, yes. There's yes. something there. Yeah, yeah. Such such a wonderful work, though. Because I mean, it, and it grows on you. That that's yeah, the thing. it does. It yeah. does. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, but Bhagavan in Akshram, right? Bhagavan has written the life story of every true spiritual aspirant. Yeah. So anyone who is inclined to follow the spiritual path will see themselves in our actual Mumbai. Yeah, I mean the others, the other four hymns also. Yes, 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 the, yes. Yeah, this one in particular. Like, yes. At first, the the one I liked most was. I'm not sure Nava Mani Malai. That, that's yes. the one I got. Yes. I was yes. mostly yeah. Uh, on to got on to at the beginning. Yes, yes. But I mean, it, they all, I mean, I, it's not like I want to compare them, but actually, I'm yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think this was what this one was the third in which was actually is the third in uh, order of composition. Um, I think Patikam and Ashtakam were the first. Yeah, and, uh, Patikam, Ashtakam, and, um, and Akshram Rai were all composed at about the same time. Exactly oh, okay. which order they were composed in, I'm not sure. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, no, I And mean, Navamani Malai, that was, some of those may have been earlier, some were, were, may have been later. Nobody knows exactly when all of them were um, composed. Yeah, yeah, it's, and, but all, yeah, also just, it's, I, also, Sadom songs have been growing on me. Like, yes, there's, there's yes. some there's some really nice songs there. I mean, yes, yes, yes. I mean, Vara Vondru Ramanesh and Tandan, like that. Yes. That's, that's one which I don't know. I mean, ever since I've discovered that song, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> it's a really nice song, yeah. And I mean, th there's many more others. Yes. But it, it's a shame that there's only like a couple of songs that have been yes, yes. Yeah. Because I, I mean, like, uh, there are other songs which I like the way they're chanted, but I have no idea what, what they're saying. Yeah, they yeah. just like them as they are. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so another thing I I wanted to talk about was the need um, the need for Viveka in this path, because again, as as I'm following this path, I tend to see like in some of the verses of Bhagavan more. Thing like more meaning, yes. But yeah. just it, it, it's difficult to say because it's not like there's more. It, it there's more to it, but it's not more at the same time. Like yes, it's the yes, same yes, thing, yes. but it has another implication. That is, we 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 as we go deeper in this path, we see more and more depth of meaning and implication in Bhagavan's words. So yeah. words, the, the things that meant something to us in the past, it now means some something so much deeper, so much clearer. Yeah, yeah, and like some verses that didn't really, I mean, not not really, uh, didn't speak to me much. Like yes. Now they're like, oh, okay, yeah. This yes, thing. yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, I, I don't know, it's, it's, and. Also, like one of my favorite works of Bhagavan is actually Akatma Panchakam, which is like a really, I feel like it's a really nice street work. Yes. It's really packing everything into it. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, every work of Bhagavan, or actually Apalapato, I think that, 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 yes, yes. That, that's a really lovely one. Yeah. Yes. Like, even though those small works of Bhagavan are really so, so packed in, yes, with, yes. Meaning, with meaning and all that. So yeah, and about Viveka, yeah, it's a lot. It's all, it, I believe it's also important because, uh, I mean, in the spiritual path, in Bhagavan's path in particular, but I guess it's everywhere is, uh, is the same. There are a lot of interpretations, and there's a lot of I don't want to say conflicting, but kind of conflicting views. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's things. inevitable because <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, so. everyone sees the teaching through their own eyes. So yeah. our own um, our own mind, in a, we, we cannot read without interpreting. Yeah. And we interpret according to our own understanding. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, but the thing is, we shouldn't be fixed in our understanding. We should yeah. always be. This is a part of investigation. So we we're not going to learn more information, but we want to get greater and greater clarity. And as the clarity deepens, the meaning more and more meaning comes out of it. Yeah, yeah. So this is a, this is a process of spiritual growth. Yeah, and at the same time, like I was, uh, I don't want to say frustrated, but I, not really. It's not really that important to me right now. But in the past, I was like, oh, why did these people just interpret it in this way? Like I don't know, like yes, some yes, yes. or something like that. Like I, I'm just getting. Why did they do this? Do this? You know, or yes. things like that. But, yeah. We we shouldn't be too concerned about others' yeah. interpretation. What we understand is what is useful for us. So <laughs> yeah, we, yes. we we need to be sincere. We need to we need to firstly we need to read Bhagavan very carefully. That is the sravana. We need to think about it very deeply. That is manana. We need to try to understand the connection between why he said like this in Akram, like this in Uludina, like this in Nana. What are the connections? Seeing all the connections is is uh, that's all part of the process of manana. But most important of all is the nidityasana, the actual practice, because it's only from the practice that the real clarity will come. Because the source of clarity lies in our own heart, we ourselves are the source of clarity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah because I mean, no matter how much you study, like if you if you do not practice past a certain point, like your understanding will not get any deeper. Actually, it yes. just become more complicated in a way. Yeah, not, yes. Not at all clear. Yeah, yeah. Um, I read this book. I don't know about the translation of these books, but there are some passages in it which I find interesting. It's Muruganar's uh, disciplines that are essential in the spiritual aspect. Yes, yes. The spiritual aspect. Yeah, I know about that. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, I love Muruganar. I just, I really love it. But in this particular work, he comes across as like very severe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, and there are some passages like, I, I just something like, uh, for for sadhus to be seen at the cinema or something is, yes, yes, is yes, the kind yes. of shameful <laughs> sight that most people would despise or something. Yes, yes. And I, I was just wondering where is this coming from? I mean, I mean, it, it I, no, 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 not, not that, not that this severe tone. But what is yes. he talking about really? What is the meaning of this yes, particular yes, yes. words? Yeah. Um, there are some very nice things in that work. I suspect a lot of that was maybe early notes that he made when he was first coming to the path. That's what I rather guess, but I don't know. Um, yeah, because... um, it, it, it's very unlike... It, it, some bits there are very characteristic of Morgana. Some uh, seem to be out of little out of character of the Murugana we, we come to yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. It, it's an interesting work, but I think we, like everything, we have to take what we think is useful for us. As a, as a general rule, Bhagavan didn't give do's and don'ts. Yeah, that, that's in fact, by I... the way, there's a verse in Guru Vachika Kawai in which Bhagavan says, the guru who gives do's and don'ts is both Brahma and Yama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, 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 we do's and don'ts are not Bhagavan's path, but we can, we can understand why Murugana says like that. For, for example, about cinema, we shouldn't be taking interest in external things. We shouldn't yeah, be yeah, we yeah. shouldn't be seeking entertainment. We don't. But when we're living in the world, when we when we 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 have family and we, there are so many demands made upon us. So we have to play, as Bhagavan says in, you know, there are a couple of verses in Uludhanapadana Bandham, but Bhagavan translated from Yoga Vashista. Outwardly acting as if you, that inwardly knowing all that is to be known, inwardly free of desire, 
outwardly play your part as if you have desire, as if you. So, so we we have to, according to the circumstances of our life, we have to adjust to those around us. We have to play our part in this world. But inwardly, the real detachment is inward. I mean, nowadays we can't avoid television. There's television in every house, unless you're you're living on your own, away from all people, you, you can't avoid television. It's just one of those things. So these things are thrust upon us, but it's how much our mind is taking interest in all these things. That is what's important. Yeah, that, that's actually the significance yeah. of this. Yes. Uh, because, yeah, because I mean, if we go by the teaching of Bhagavan that uh, Prarabdha is, is uh, running yes, around exactly. for life, and I might, I might be at the cinema. So yes, yes. Somehow, yeah. Or, or he was talking just about sadhus, but that's, yes, uh, yes. But, but again, why would the sadhu be at the cinema? So, yes. I don't so, know. so rather than rather than taking every statement in that in that text as. Uh, trying to apply it literally, we need yeah. to understand the underlying spirit, why Murugana said like that, why he had this attitude to this thing. Then we get the spirit of it rather than going by the letter of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the, 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 the thing. And um, I was wondering if we can take, uh, knowing that Murugana, well, as much as we can say about anyone that that even though it is ignorance to say that uh, he or she is a yani, but yeah. knowing that Murugunar is a yani, yes. should we take Murugunar's writings and Murugunar's work and all this uh, as, as the, at the same importance with Bar not exactly at the same importance, but as a faithful and supplement yes, to yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we can. I think we can. That is... Um, Personally, for myself, I give most importance to Bhagavan's own original writings. Yeah. There are various reasons. My knowledge of Tamil is, is fairly limited. If I try to understand other works of Murugana, I have to really struggle to understand. So Bhagavan has given us relatively few, just a few hundred verses Bhagavan has written. But if we can easily... We can easily learn those 300 verses. We can learn the meaning of them, at least. We, we can familiarize ourselves with them. And so they, they become impressed on our mind. And for, I find everything we need is there in Bhagavan's works. But the verses of Murugana, the verses of Sadhuam, are of great value. They, they, they're very... They, they, they supplement, they complement the verses of Bhagavan in so many ways, but they are not essential. So yeah. for those who, who are fortunate to know Tamil, those verses are very, very valuable. But it, it's I don't think we should we should feel if we're not able to understand them, we shouldn't feel we're missing out on something essential. What is essential is in Bhagavan's own original writings. If we, if we are familiar with Bhagavan's original writings, that is sufficient. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. It's just that sometimes the mind is always looking for diversity. So sometimes, yeah, yes, I don't know, yes, maybe, yes. just rather than putting the mind on something else, I'd rather just be in some of Murinan's verses or Sadhuam's verses yeah, or yeah. things like that. So, yeah. Yeah, but again, as I have, I've been reading this. This is almost the presence of Sri Ramana's Sri Ramana Sani Di Murai, yes, which, which is a translation by Professor Swaminathan. I mean, there's yes. it's some of the verses of Sri Ramana yes. Sani Di Murai. I don't, I know, I, I've heard that, that the translation is not really satisfactory. I don't know, yes, but it's, I mean, I don't know if the translation is right or not, but it's lovely. I mean, it's, yes, yes. I, I love this work, it's, it's, yes. <laughs> really lovely. So yeah, I mean, I, I love work there in general, but yes. I, I mean, always, but that uh, that uh, disciplines that are essential. Yes. A bit. Some of them seem a bit off. I don't know. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I I can't disagree with them. It's just that. They, yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, um, because yeah, I, I was already just troubled about this whole Sanyasa thing, and uh, yeah, reading this this is even more troubling because yes. yeah, yeah, when you hear about do's and don'ts and yes. which are not really applicable, you think that oh, because I'm living this particular life, I can't. Yeah, that has now been published, but I rather suspect if someone had wanted to publish that in Murugana's lifetime, he would have said no. Okay, yeah, because it's not praises to Bhagavan. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, this is also odd because Murugunar's whole, I mean, 99% of all that Murugunar wrote are, are praises to Bhagavan. So, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, but, um, yeah. Um, I wanted to say something, I completely forgot. Yeah, and it's, before, I mean, when I first started reading about my teachings, I was also reading all this whole other auxiliary things like, I don't know, like Chudamani or yeah. Ashtana Prakita or and things like that. I can't remember yeah. all of this. And it's a bit oh, Kaivalya Ravanita. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a bit weird because if this works, I mean, it, it troubled me at the time because if this works, all like there's this discussion between guru and disciple, yes. but the disciple always gets like get, realizes he, himself like that. Yes, yes. That yes. And I was like, whoa, I, I'm not. This <laughs> is always yes. a bit weird. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I I was getting this preconception that oh, it's it's, it's yes. that is, and, and I mean for some for some mature disciples, I guess it is. But yes. Yeah. That's that's not but, my case. But, those, those works which are written in a form of a dialogue, that's a, that's a style of, of, of presenting the teachings. So yeah, yeah. We, 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 we don't have to take it literally, but uh, we come to a guru, ask a few questions, and then we realize it. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. it. There's a lot of work to be done in the background. So the, that, that format of presenting the teachings is not to be, we, we take the teachings, not the format. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but even, yeah, even, even those teachings, like, I was reading, uh, I think the last thing I read was Drisha Viveka or something yes. like that. Oh, it's so complicated. I mean, all, all yes, of this, yes, yes, yes. Just, I, I just can't get around them. I mean, yes. Even Matija Karika, which I like, I mean, it's one that I like the most. Yes. It's so complicated. I mean, I, yeah. A lot of, a lot of, uh, old philosophy is Bhagavan has made it so simple yeah, for yeah, us. Yeah. He's, 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 cut out, he's cut out all the unnecessary and he's gone right to the heart of what, what is Advaita all about. The most important thing, it's about practice. So Bhagavan has highlighted what is the practical implication of all of Advaitic teachings. And for practice, which of the essential teachings? Yeah. There are so many reasons why it, uh, these texts became unnecessary, complicated, because it was a, a lot of these texts were composed in, in a certain in a certain culture when there were so many competing philosophies, so many competing um, um, uh, uh, forms of uh, spiritual practice. So, yeah. but because. Because you, a lot of these were not addressed to the simple, uh, direct spiritual aspirant. They were addressed to people on other paths to try and slowly bring them to this path. But whereas Bhagavan is not, Bhagavan is not there to defeat any other uh, philosophy or to argue against any other philosophy or to convert anyone who doesn't want to be converted. For those who want the truth. For those who want to know who am I, Bhagavan shows the direct way. <laughs> that's, all, that's pretty much all there is to it. Yes. So, yeah. we, we, in a way, we're better off not reading all those old texts. It's, I mean, it's, it's interesting to read them, but there's a lot there that is not helpful to us at all. Yeah, I actually like the... the from the works that Bhagavan translated, I think the most beautiful is Bhagavad Gita Saram because this is that, that's like really short yes, yes. I mean, yeah, that's, yes, it's not complicated at all. 
And yes. even though it has some really deep verses like that one, which is it's that one which is also in Madhika Karika, I think, uh, about the unreal never having uh, never see, uh, never having being. And oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah, that one. Yes, is verse really nine, deep, though, I think. <laughs> yeah, and it's verse. No, I can't remember the chapter from the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah there's a lot of. There's a lot of very beautiful verses in that book. Like, yes, yes. But, but again, it's it's the same thing actually. It's, yes, yes. It's, yeah, more of the same. But it's nice to like keep reading this when the mind goes outwards. And, yes. Yeah, because if it's said in a different way, like the mind enjoys the diversity, and that's it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dan. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's a pleasure. Have a, have a nice right. Day. Right. No more of no, no, no more of that.